Hello, everyone, and welcome to the finals of the StarCityGames.com Players' Championship. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, we are here in the booth. We've, of course, got Nick Miller. He'll be doing a write-up for you as well. As we prepare to watch Joe Lissette on your left and Caleb Shear on your right, it'll be Miracles versus Storm. And as we know, Joe selected to play first, and Caleb said, all right, let's play some Legacy, and that's exactly what we're about to do. Should be a lot of fun here in the finals for Joe Lissette. We've seen him in the Player Championship for three years running. I know he's wanted to win this tournament for a very, very long time coming into this weekend. He said he was very, very excited to be here yet again. Took a risk two weekends ago to Lance by not attending the Invitational, but he knew a lot would have to go wrong for him to not qualify. He was right in that decision. And Caleb, not the best 2016 here for him, but he was able to get in this tournament, and he is certainly making the most of it as these two players are scrying. They are on mulligans to six. Caleb will scry to the bottom. And here we go. Caleb has done quite well for himself in these single elimination back against the wall scenarios. Won the Invitational last year in Las Vegas, having to win something like 13 or 14 matches in a row to get to that point. And uh, now at the Players' Championship, of course, the standard portion, a lot of single elimination, day two, all single elim. And Caleb has found himself in the finals. Joe starts off with a basic island in the Sensei's Divining Top for Caleb. A polluted delta into an underground sea will bring him down to 19. And we'll see what his play will be after that. I imagine some sort of cantrip here for the Storm player. And there is a ponder in hand for Caleb. Lissette, uh, for those of you new to these sort of things, opening up with by far the best and most important card of the deck in Sensei's Divining Top. Absolutely agree. Allows him to establish a soft lock with counterbalance, good in a variety of matchups, particularly good here with Shira trying to assemble a critical mass of one mana spells. Caleb will take a mulligan. Or excuse me, he'll take a shuffle with the ponder. I suppose it could be classified as a mulligan with the ponder. I call it a wash. Yeah. Mystery card on the way here for Shear. Lion's Eye Diamond. This is a Chromox. He'll put a Cabal Ritual on that. And now here's a Duress. Get a good look at Joe's hand here. A Force of Will, a Spell Snare, another Top, and a Swords. Not the best hand to have in this matchup. This is why I think the Miracles side of this matchup is a little shaky, at least Game 1, even though... Uh, Opening up on Sensei Divine Top and the counterbalance is so powerful. There's a lot of dead weight and not really that many counters at the end of it. I believe Shira's leftovers are is all mana, but if he rips one of his big cards, Infernal Tutor and Ad Nauseum, uh, this game could be over very, very quickly. Lissette loses the Force of Will. Still left with a spell snare in hand and a top to spin as we head back over to Caleb. Another copy of Lion's Eye Diamond. Looks like he's going to play one of them. Of course, when you have to worry about counterbalance, this does make some sense. He's going to play both of them and simply pass the turn back. Spinning at the top here from Joe. Joe here. Uh, this draw is a little bit soft. I mean, he does have Divine Top, but no way to shuffle. Uh, his hand's not very good. Looks like he was just looking at a couple lands on top. Maybe another Divining Top. But Sheer will not have a problem with mana this game. Mm -hmm. And I do not think Lissette can currently defend himself. So he is at the mercy of Sheer finding one of his big payoff cards and, and quickly being up a game. Well, I would say that Spell Snare counts. It's some defense. Yeah. Definitely gets Infernal Tutor. Misty Rainforest, the draw. Misty Rainforest, the play. Caleb will pass the turn back. We go to Joe. He'll spin the top on Caleb's own step. Volcanic Island. Basic island among those three cards. He'll draw a card with Lissette. And you can see Lissette pretty furiously topping and retopping. Uh, he is on the hunt for counterbalance. Well, it's worth trying to find. Top card of his deck right now is Force of Will. Keep that in mind. I imagine he's going to make sure he keeps that on top of his deck and never adds it to his hand. If you can avoid it, yep. You do not want that to get exposed to a discard spell. Also, if Force of Will is floating among your top cards, if you are able to find Counterbalance, that locks out Ad Nauseam. Mm -hmm. Joe will spin again. Force of Will. Looks like a land. It looks like maybe Snapcaster Mage. Joe done rearranging. He'll draw a card. 
picked up a Snapcaster Mage, simply passed the turn back. Caleb has now finally drawn some way to manipulate his deck in Preordain. He'll start by sacrificing the Misty Rainforest. There's an underground sea. And now here's Preordain. Scry 2, Lotus Petal is one, Brainstorm is the other. Brainstorm's got to be attractive here with the fetch land still in play and flooding out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You could use a new set of cards here. Caleb will take the Brainstorm, put the pedal to the bottom, pedal to the bottom, <laughs> and pass the turn back to Joe. Joe will spin the top yet again. Remember, he's trying to float that Force of Will on top of his deck so he can tap a top to draw a card and then Force of Will as necessary. But the one thing he doesn't want to do is actually have Force of Will in his hand. That's why Lissette decided to draw the Snapcaster Mage there. Mm -hmm. uh, in spite of having nothing really to flash back at this point, it's duress proof. He wants to keep the critical cards that are spells floating around the cards that he can access at a moment's, mo moment's notice with Sensei's Divining Top and keep his hand full of cards either he doesn't care if he loses to duress or that are immune to duress. Polluted Delta, the draw for Caleb. And now he'll start off with the Brainstorm. Brainstorm's good. Dark Ritual is one. Tendrils is two. And Cataxian Probe is three. So I think we might see Land Tendrils go back. I, you know, uh, honestly, I don't know if he wants to lose the Tendrils. Okay. He, it's not out of the question for him to manual this. Well, he left the Tendrils in hand. He'll sacrifice Blue to Delta to put away, I believe, a Land and a Lotus Petal. So th he could go manual mode. It's in play. A volcanic Island here for Caleb. And he's got so much mana that shuffling away the mana is basically free. Mm -hmm. Probe. Caleb will pay the two life. And Joe's going to reveal his hand. Snapcatcher Mage, Spell Snare. And a swords. But this is not a whole lot of information here for sure, as Lisette's been floating some cards on the top of his deck now with the Sensei's Divining Top for several turns. He has a Scalding Tarm for a fresh set of looks with the Divining Top. So even though that hand says Coast is clear, sure knows uh, it's a lot more complicated than that. Caleb okay, will just play a Polluted Delta and pass the turn back over to Joe. Joe will be spinning here in a moment, I'm sure. I take that back. Joe wants to draw a card first. Top goes back on top of the deck, and now he'll sacrifice a fetch land. I'm assuming Lissette drew the force of will he's been floating. That is my assumption as well. Gets a clean look at it, and he's somewhat duress proof insofar as he, if he finds land number seven, he has access to Snapcaster Force of Will. Additionally, finding counterbalance means he doesn't have to worry about duress at all. Time to spin. Eh, Terminus, not so much. Not for this matchup. <laughs> I think a couple ponders there, though. Joe will untap. Found a ponder. And he'll cast that. Top three. Ponder, Terminus, and I think another copy of Terminus there. Yeah, pretty easy shuffle there for Lissette. Yep. Not all liking that at all. All these cards, you know, Ponder and Scalding Tarn and the like, are justifiable plays on their own, but in access with Sensei's Divining Top becomes so much more potent because when you're shuffling your deck over and over again, um, it's a huge reduction in variance, and you're able to assemble the, the lockout pieces or have access to your miracle cards at exactly the right time. Snapcaster Mage is the mystery draw. And now it looks like Joe's going to play the Snapcaster so that he can replay the Ponder. So the Ponder is exiled, and now Joe will take a look at the top three. Another top in there. It looks like a Brainstorm, and ah, there's the blue-blue enchantment that he's been looking for. There's Counterbalance. He'll draw that card from the Ponder. Now will he tap out to play it? Oh. 
Force of Will in hand, plus now being immune from duress is a pretty good incentive to tap out. There are worse spots to be in. Caleb will draw. He's picked up a ponder. He'll start with the ponder. Nope. Brainstorm says no, and Caleb knows he is beat, and he will concede immediately. Joe Lissette will win game number one here over Caleb Shear. Miracles up a game over pond. Excuse me, up a game over Storm, thanks to that ponder. Yes. Well, thanks to Sensei's divine top. That also helps too. Some other things, you know, happened. Yes. But thanks to Sensei's divine top. Cyborgs is where we're going to go. We'll start with Caleb, who's got a Chrome Mox, three Xantid Swarm, four Abrupt Decay, two Crows and Grip, two Surgical Extraction, Empty the Warrens, a Bayou, and a Tropical Island. A couple different routes that he can go here. Uh, this is a, an interesting setup here because he has access to four Abrupt Decays and two Crows and Grips. That's a very natural way to fight through Counterbalance plus Sensei's Dividing Top. You have Xantid Swarm. That's an answer to a variety of counter spells that Lissette has. And you have your copy of Empty the Warrens in case you think that you can't really assemble a critical mass of spells via Tendrils, but a empty the warrens for eight or ten tokens could be good enough the problem is i don't think you can bring in all of these cards you just can't cut that many cantrips or that many ritual effects to make room for all this stuff so all these cards i like individually but i don't know if Shira could really sideboard in 10 cards i don't think there's room for it so he's gonna have to pick and choose my instinct is just to have the Abrupt Decays and the Xantid Swarms, but I could see going deeper with the Crozan Grips and the Empty of the Warrens. For Joe Lissette, two Engineer Explosives, two Back to Basics, two Moat, an Entreat the Angels, three Fluster Storm, a Pyroblast, a Red Elemental Blast, two, sur two Surgical Extractions, and one Wear Tear. So I, I like the Red Blasts a lot in this matchup. Shears trying to assemble a hand via Blue Cantrips, and that, that's a good answer there. The star of the matchup, though, the three copies of Fluster Storm, uh, powerful in one-for-one -one spots, powerful in spots where Shears going off. Past that, you have some fringe options. The Engineer Explosives are justifiable if you think Shear is going to lead out with some of his artifact mana. It's also an answer to empty the Warrens if you're concerned about that. Um, the two copies of Moat kind of do the same thing, but I'm guessing that's way too slow for the matchup. Uh, certainly the cheap counter spells are really good here, and Lissette could also potentially bring in Engineered Explosives as well. Well, these players are going to sideboard up. You have to imagine, first of all, because they're teammates, they've played this matchup plenty of times against each other, but also just because they love Legacy so much, they've played both sides of this matchup before. So be curious to see how they sideboard and if they want to try to get an edge on one another. Well, and, and that's I, and this is part of the reason I was so surprised Shear took the draw in this format because he's been around the block a few times. And I mean, it's as simple as, you know, Shear might have an opportunity to duress a Sensei's Divining Top on the play and set it resolves. Mm -hmm. Now, Lissette was super redundant with Divining Top, so one duress wasn't going to break that up. But still, uh, play draw, huge in this kind of matchup where the game can often be determined inside the first two turns, either Lissette assembling a lock or Shear winning the game outright. Well, as these players do get ready, we'll talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale one last time. If you're looking to save a little bit on your standard singles like that Aetherworks Marvel, place to be. Yep, every week there's a new weekly sale. It starts Monday, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, so make sure to be checking back to the website at least once a week to see what the new sale is. Right now, 50% off of all standard singles, but that sale is running out pretty soon. So if you want to get some deep discounts on some of your, uh, I don't know, favorites, and cards you feel compelled to play <laughs> whatever <laughs> starcitygames.com for some sweet standard savings we call that the hard sell that is the hard that's sell. the hard sell right there well done yep. well done not too tough to sell anybody on joe Lissette's ability to play miracles in legacy but it's the other decks that he played here this weekend uh that really surprised me from the 37 year old from redlands california modern deck being green black tron uh the black splash almost solely for collective brutality and then a standard deck teamer energy a deck that just has not really got a lot of footing because standard is somewhat diverse but when you have when you're in a small meta game where you expect a lot of people to play aetherworks variants this is a gamble worth taking and it looks like it may work turn four kills with six counter spells in the bat and in the sideboard joe knew what the standard meta game was going to look like um it matched expectations, though we had to get through what I think was a challenging matchup. Last round against Todd Anderson, but uh, a lot of Aetherworks Works Marvel in this tournament. Not surprising. And uh, if we get to standard, he's going to have exactly that matchup. A lot of open top eights, five open wins, most of which have come in standard. I think a lot of people forget about that. We think of Joe as mostly a legacy player, but he's got more open wins in standard than any other format. For Caleb, a Volcanic Island and a Ponders, where he will start. Both players appear to be keeping seven cards. Xantid Swarm, Duress, and another Xantid Swarm means Caleb is going to shuffle very, very quickly. 
And this is my concern, just how many of these anti-counterspell cards, anti-counterbalance cards has Shira brought in, and at the expense of what? Because you can only cut so much in this kind of matchup. You need to remain dense. All these cards are individually attractive, but the sum of them, uh, I think it's hard to justify bringing all of them in. Look at all ritual. And a passing of the turn over to Lisette. Picks up a Scalding Tarn. He'll play that and pass the turn back over to Caleb. Caleb will now play another Ponder. Perhaps he's on the hunt for another land, and if that was the case, Blue to Delta is a good thing to see staring back at him. Tendrils and Misty Rainforest also in those cards as well. But now he'll be able to play one of the Xanta Swarms that he has in his hand. Caleb will draw. Take the Misty. We'll see him play the Misty, and he'll sacrifice it. Is it a tropical island? It'll actually be a bayou. Is it time for the buzz buzz? It is. Now here's what's always interesting. In this matchup, where you have access to your opponent's deck list, you know exactly what they can sideboard in, though you don't know how they'll sideboard. For Joe as a Miracles player, Terminus and Swords of Plowshares do have some value in spots like this, and that's why you see a Swords here in this spot. Because Xantan Swarm is very good against him if it gets to hang out. Yes. And it cuts off his best sideboard cards also. Terminus not as great, of course, but if Caleb does, does go towards Empty the Warrens, that gives Joe an out to that. So well, has he left any in? We'll see as we play, but he does have Engineer Explosives in hand, so looks like he's got that stuff covered too. And I like the Engineer Explosive out of the board because it covers you against Empty the Warrens and Xantid Swarm, mm -hmm. and can also tag Artifact Mana in some fringe spots. Another Xantid Swarm to draw here for Caleb. He'll play that. We'll see if this resolves. Joe will brainstorm in response. Three cards on the way here for Lisette. Two cards will be going back in just a bit. Looks like counterbalance among those cards. Brainstorm done resolving here for Lisette. And now he'll crack the Scalding Tarn. Volcanic Island on the way. Looks like, the sw looks like the swarm is in, so we'll be heading back over to Joe in just a second here, I believe. Swarm always scary in this matchup, but again, he does have a pretty clean answer here with explosives. Mm -hmm. Also, keep in mind, Lisette's build has three copies of Vendillion Click. Mm -hmm. So pretty big risk here for Shear to just send in the Xantid Swarm if he's not planning on winning the game exactly that turn. Decisions, decisions here for Lissette. Counterbalance in hand, obviously a very attractive option because, well, it's counterbalance. Mm -hmm. So there's some appeal to that. It was so good in the first game and so very good in this matchup. But he does have to be a little worried about some things here. Ponder the draw here for Caleb. Caleb going to start by playing a Ponder. No attack with his Antid Swarm just yet. Cabal Ritual, Crows and Grip, Underground Sea, the top couple of cards. Underground Sea, not a bad pickup here for sure, as uh, he's in the market for more lands, and now he can cast Abrupt Decay, not mm -hmm. a card he could cast before. Uh, Cabal Ritual, also somewhat attractive. The Crows and Grip, jury's out if that's going to be a card this game. Now, how much has Caleb diluted his deck to be able to handle Counterbalance? That's the question. I mean, it looks like he brought all of it in, and in that world, I I'm much more interested in the Empty the Warrens. Uh, because it's hard to assemble a Tendrils kill, but an empty for 8, 10, 12 might be good enough. Well, Caleb has the empty in hand. 
so he can go that route. He, again, he has not seen the engineered explosives just yet from Joe. The Xantid Swarm trigger is on the stack as it is attacking. Abrupt Decay will take care of the Vendillion Click. Caleb will show his hand of Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Brainstorm, and empty the Warrens. So you said it was worth being a little scared about Vendillion Click. That was accurate, unfortunately for Caleb, the way he sequenced his turn. He, he was able to put Abrupt Decay mana up, and Xantid Swarm doesn't get ambushed. Pretty big deal there. Yep. With an engineered explosives in hand, I'm almost tempted to put the brainstorm on the bottom. Just because his hand doesn't really lead anywhere then? And, and also with Lissette, you know, drawing cards and doing his stuff, it, it gets attractive for sure just to, to snap off the empty next turn. Now Joe leaving it in his hand is a little suspect, but it's not like Shira's hand does much else. Yeah, I think I'd be okay with taking Brainstorm, too. I don't think you can bottleneck him on mana here, so mm -mm. let's take the Rituals off the table. You can, If you take the Brainstorm, you're basically announcing, go ahead and empty. Oh, never mind. It's going to take Cabal Ritual. Okay. And Cabal Ritual was the draw off of that. Curious to see where Joe is trying to lead him. Force of Will the draw, not well, that, so much. That's the draw if you want to induce sheer into going for it you do that that's the that's the play that gives the most credibility to i'm worried mm -hmm. although i guess he could have just taken the empty straight away that's also if that true. was the, if that was the case here's a brainstorm from joe draw three cards he'll put two back here in just a moment we're doing some guessing about what lisette is up to here it's an unusual take. I was with you. I felt the mana was going to be off of the table in a spot like that. Empty and empty the Warrens and Brainstorm were the cards that just kind of stood out. Right. And and my instinct is just take the Brainstorm and tell him, come get it, and leave him with a hand with, that only has one path, which you can answer. Sure. Lissette's got to put two back here from the Brainstorm. Difficult decision, but he's got to do it in a timely manner. You see head judge of this tournament, Jared Silva, kind of perk up in his chair a little bit behind Joe. Might almost make him come to him decision. Well, I think Lissette has the opportunity to play counterbalance this turn, so he's trying to seed the right mana cost on the top of the deck. Mm -hmm. and it looks like he might be putting a Vencer on top. Which is okay-ish. Right. Well, I mean, it, it, if empty is the, you know. Well, it doesn't take care of the storm copies of it. Sure. Yeah. So. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So he's just now shuffling away blind. I believe still has brainstorm in hand, so he can still set up something KG next turn. No matter what swarm... Defending player can't play spells this turn. Doesn't stop counterbalance, though. Now, here is a Snapcaster Mage to get back Swords of Plowshares to take care of the Swarm. So two Swarms have been handled, and actually it provides a clock here for Joe, too. And this might actually lead Caleb down the path of, okay, I don't have my Swarm anymore. I actually need to go about doing something now. And Shur has drawn a Crozan Grip. And, you know, this is what I was speaking to. All these cards are fine. And he needs some number of them, but he's drawn two Xantid Swarms, an Abrupt Decay, and now a Crozan Grip. And it's just hard to combo out when you're doing too much of that stuff. Here's a Brainstorm. Three cards on the way. Cabal Ritual is one, Dark Ritual is two, and Pluto Delta is three. His hand only leads to one path. Yep. And Lissette has that covered, assuming uh -huh. that he left the Engineer Explosive in his hand. I think it's pretty easy to put grip plus something else back on top. And I think the plan here is pretty straightforward now, Patrick, which is try to make as many goblins as possible. Cross your fingers, hope they're good. Caleb will play a cabal ritual now.
going to get out Caleb Storm counter that he did win at the Las Vegas Invitational last year. The tournament that was so integral from the qualifying this year. Another Cabal Ritual. Storm counts up to four. Let's make it five. And how about six? Empty the Warrens. A lot of goblins about to be swept away by an engineer explosives, folks. And Shira with not much mana left over when this is all said and done, just three lands. Mm -hmm. No cards in hand. There are the goblins. And again, as long as Joe has left explosives in his hand, which he has, kaboom, goes the room, and here comes Snapcaster Mage. And now he's going to start sinking it in. Caleb will draw. It'll be a fetch land, polluted delta. Ca Caleb's next draw is a frozen grip unless he sacrifices that polluted delta. Which I, I guess you want to draw the grip for the spot, but it's still, you know, it's now nothing what? special. Yeah, now. He does draw the grip. Joe will draw. In for two more. Scalding Tarn. Pass the turn back. Caleb will draw. Simply pass. Joe will draw. In for two more. Caleb down to 11. This is a top. This <laughs> is another counterbalance. And Caleb will draw. Cinched in. Yes, it is. Joe's going to spin that top now. You can just tell and see his experience in the, in the Storm matchup when someone's going to bring Xantus Swarm or something else to the table. He knew exactly how he wanted to sideboard. And, you know, again, I just question, how are you supposed to make room for all of this? Yeah. Ad nauseum is the draw. The likelihood of that resolving quite low. Caleb will pass the turn back. Joe is going to play another Snapcaster Mage. Speed things up even more now. Looks like he's going to target a Brainstorm with the Snapcaster Mage, and he will. Caleb, in response, is going to sacrifice a Fetchland. He'll go get himself an Underground C. And now here's an attempt at Ad Nauseam. Curious to see if this does resolve. Joe's going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn in the meantime. And he may have a response here. He'll spin the top, see if he can find a five. I think Force Wolf was the first card. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he'll even let out a, a small <laughs> smile there because we are all set here. Joe Lissette's going to win this match over Caleb Scherer. Two games to zero. Miracle's going to destroy Storm.